morning. I want to welcome you to worship. It is so good to have you with us here today. And it is a change. This is kind of exciting. We are live streaming at this time now from the sanctuary. This is not pre-recorded. And so we are so glad that you've joined us. We're in a series, and it's entitled Still Hopeful. And Pastor Emily is going to be speaking today on Still Joyful from Romans 15, 13 is our core text for the series that we're in. If you are visiting here with us today, we're so glad you've joined us. There is a connection card that's found uh, above uh, the image on your screen. We invite you to fill that out. Let us know that you were here. Also, as always, if you have a prayer request or a need from the church, you can always email us at info at cambridgelutheran.org, which is available on the website, or you can uh, speak to Pastor Keith or any of the pastors. Again, welcome to worship. So good to be together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. We begin now with the order for confession and forgiveness. God of all wonders, you have set us humans under the swirling stars and among the wild winds, hoping that in your love we will grow deep, sustaining roots. Though we are lost among our schedules and phones and emails and lists, and we forget our roots. For the sake of living hopefully, remind us that your love has no end. We forget to be kind. For the sake of living joyfully, remind us to care for one another. We forget to be honest. For the sake of living peacefully, remind us that we are fragile. We forget to protect. For the sake of living faithfully, remind us that your creation is holy. We forget about breathing. For the sake of living powerfully, remind us of your peace. Forgive us, loving God. God of wonders, be with us. We rejoice in your forgiveness. Your love is all that we need. Amen. Let us pray. God of all hopefulness, fill our days with deep, transforming joy. On bright days, be with us while we celebrate life and light and love. And on those darker days, be with us still, O oh God, while we gather our broken and tired pieces. Whenever you are with us, God, we know that joy remains. You are good to us, and we rejoice in you. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. Uh, this is exciting to be able to come to you live this morning. Although there are um, one service we still pre-record, so while we're doing both these online and in-person worship services, we actually um, have our messages typically finished by Wednesday. And my plan, I was going to stand up here and tell you that I have no idea how to talk to you about joy right now. With all that's going on in the world, how do I possibly talk about joy right now? But then, yesterday, something happened, and now I have this intense feeling of joy in my heart, and I have a bit of a different problem. How do I get everyone else to feel the same joy that I'm feeling? 
I suppose you probably want to know what it is that happened. Um, I got engaged. Hold for applause. Um, but what about everyone else, though? What about the millions, even billions, of people around the world that didn't get engaged this weekend or have some life-altering experience happen? How do we talk about joy right now? I mean, on one hand, we should be joyful, but how, in our current climate, do I stand up here and tell you, hey, be joyful? That's like telling an angry person to smile or an annoyed person to relax, or it doesn't really work, does it? I can't just say, hey, I'm joyful. What's wrong with you? Be joyful like I am. It doesn't work. And I think one of our barriers to joyfulness is that we don't fully know what it means to be joyful. But here's what we do know. We know what not joy feels like. We know what it feels like when we're lacking joy. I mean, been on Facebook lately? Have you watched people express concern, fear, sadness, or even grief only to be torn apart? Have you watched people you thought you knew turn into someone you don't recognize? I know that that's when I start to feel joyless rather than joyful. There's a pain to it, right? I mean, it can literally hurt. See, our bodies, you know, the ones that God created, our bodies have a knack of feeling our emotions for us, especially when we're too stubborn to give in to those emotions. I mean, our bodies ache when we're tired, or how often have you um, fallen sick when really you're just stressed, or we feel knots when we're nervous, but what about joy? In our story today, Mary, who is in the story, is currently pregnant with Jesus, goes and visits her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant. And when Mary greets Elizabeth, when she says hello, Elizabeth's own child in her own womb leaps for joy. When was the last time you leapt for joy? I mean, really, I mean it. I want you to think back, to consider. When was the last time you leapt for joy? Or when was the last time your body leapt for joy for you? We usually use phrases like, my stomach flipped, or I was so excited my heart was beating out of my chest. In Mary and Elizabeth's story, Elizabeth's body and the baby inside her body knew to be joyful before she did. We do know that the baby inside of Elizabeth would later become John the Baptist, who led the way for Jesus. So it might have just been John saying, oh, thank God, I don't have to do all this work by myself. But more likely than that, there was a sense of joy so deep inside of Elizabeth that even the child in her womb could feel it. We have to listen to our bodies. Because deep down, the bodies that God gave us, the ones that the Holy Spirit lives within, the ones that Jesus died for, will tell us when we're joyful especially when our eyes have a hard time seeing it and our brains have a hard time processing it. I mean, trust me, yesterday when Kimball was down on one knee, somehow my body knew what was happening before my brain did. My hands automatically went up to my mouth completely shocked, and I'd say a solid five seconds felt like a lifetime passed before my brain told my mouth to say the word Yes, but outside of those rare occurrences, we don't really leap for joy, do we? On the other hand, kids seem to leap for joy all the time. Whether it's hearing that they're going to Disney World or waking up on Christmas morning, 
going to grandma's house, or even if they just get a letter mailed to them with their name on it. Kids seem to find joy in the big things and the small things. I mean, it probably doesn't help that as adults, when we get mail with our name on it, it's usually a bill. There's a lot less reason for joy there. But if kids find joy everywhere, and we don't remember the last time we felt joy or leapt for joy, what happened? When did it stop? Why did it stop? Has the world made us naturally cynical? To the point where feeling joy is actual work. Maybe. But work or not, it's still important. In times such as these, we need joy. We just do. We are currently in a time when the mental health concerns are at an all-time high. People are feeling more alone than ever before. People who have never suffered from anxiety are having anxiety problems. Depression is on the rise. Relapses and addiction are on the rise, not to mention feelings of hopelessness, a general lack of motivation, and immobilization. All of these things can bury our joy. See, we like to think of joy as this perfect thing. It's the 70 degree day with the sun and a few clouds. It's the birds chirping. It's a calm day on the lake. It's, maybe it's a book out on the deck or it's a picnic in the park. I need to tell you something. And I really need you to hear me. Joy does not need to exist perfectly in order to count. I'll say that one more time. Joy does not need to exist perfectly in order for it to count. Put another way, you know how raw veggies are really healthy, but the minute you toss them in oil or cook them in butter or, or add sauces, it ruins it, right? It's not so healthy anymore. Complicating the veggies, mixing them with other things, makes the healthiness not count as much. Yeah, joy isn't like that at all. Joy can, and often does, coexist with other seemingly contradictory emotions. Anger, fear, frustration, and stress. You might be thinking, if you're joyful right now, Right now, today, if you're joyful, it means that you aren't paying attention. I would argue that being joyful and being unaware of the reality around you are not the same thing. Nor does one lead to the other. What I'm telling you is that sometimes joy is work. Sometimes you have to go looking for it. In fact, sometimes you have to create it. A friend of mine from about 10 years ago, wise beyond her years, once told me that I had to create my own happiness because I had to stop relying on other people to provide it. I think joy can be like that too. Sometimes joy isn't going to fall into your lap. Sometimes you have to create it, and lucky for us is that we have a wonderful place to start. The theme verse for the preaching series we're in right now and for the summer at Camp Wapo is Romans 15, 13, and in it, it says this, may the God of hope fill you with all joy. God fills us with joy because God loves us. What we have to consider is this, is the joy God gives us any different than the joy the world gives us? I'd say yes, mainly because the joy God gives us is consistent. We may not always feel it on the surface, but it's always present. Maybe a better way to say it is it's always available. You may have to dig 
through all the stuff I outlined a minute ago, and it may take some work. Because the alternative is to go looking for it elsewhere. Where do we find joy elsewhere? Well, usually it has something to do with serving our own interests. And usually it's expensive in one way or another. Financially, emotionally, what you're missing out on by pursuing it is expensive. But the joy God offers, the joy we find in Christ, the joy we find in Christ is in the understanding that we are a new creation that each and every day is a new creation. Each day has its own possibilities, its own opportunities. Each day is 24 hours that we have not experienced yet. Today is a new day. I want you to say that with me there at home. Say it with me. Today is a new day. And you are a new creation. Now, at home, I want you to turn to the person sitting next to you, and I want you to repeat with me, you are a new creation. I want to close this morning with a prayer, with the words coming out um, from part of uh, Psalm 30. Please hear and absorb these words and pray these words with me. Sing praises to the Lord. O oh, you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy, joy comes with the morning. Good morning, and amen. At this time, we'll be praying for the offering and um, 
For those of you at home looking to, um, for an opportunity to give online, uh, giving information should be in the video description box. Um, all kinds of opportunities. We still have, of course, text giving as well as giving through the church website. And at this time, let us pray. God of all hopefulness, fill our days with deep, transforming joy. Oh, I apologize. God of all hopefulness, every day you choose to abide with us and we are grateful. Give us fresh and hopeful hearts, ready to respond to the world in need. Give us courage to share all that we are and all that we have, offering our best gifts to you. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks on this day for the engagement of Emily and Kimball. We pray that you would bless their relationship and walk with them for so many years to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the end to the coronavirus. We pray that you would heal all people who are sick, that you would prevent us from making one another sick, and that you would rapidly empower all those who are creating a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for racial reconciliation in our country, in our state, and we pray that you would help us, people of all races, to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also pray for all of our police officers and law enforcement. We pray that you would walk with them, that you would strengthen them, that you would help them to know your presence, that you would help them as they protect us and keep law and order and bring peace to our cities and to our towns. We pray especially for all those police officers who are facing PTSD. We pray that you would bring them healing, your presence, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This time we silently pray for all of the concerns that we bring before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we pray for, thee, for these things and your world and uh, all concerns that we brought before you. We pray that you would uh, be active and present in those places. Amen. The Lord be with you also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you 
and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you have gathered communion, bread and wine or grape juice, uh, we invite you to uh, pick that up at this time. And we invite you to join together uh, in the bread, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. If children are present, we invite you to give them a sign of the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the healing power of this gift of life. and We pray that it would strengthen us in love toward you, toward one another, and toward your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning again. Just a couple of quick announcements and opportunities for ministry. We are wrapping up our week of Camp WAPO with our WAPO in the Box Camp Experience. If you have not made your way through all the materials, do not worry. You can finish those things at your own pace. I'm very excited to see all the, the s'more um, competition entries as they roll in. We will uh, put those up on Facebook later today. Speaking of camp, of course, VBS is right around the corner, August 10th through the 14th. Registration links can be found on the church Facebook page, um, on the church website. And an email will go out this week as well with that information. We are, have been, and continue to be um, available for pastoral care uh, here at Cambridge Lutheran. If you or anyone in your family need anything at all, need someone to talk to, need pastoral care, prayer, and support, please let us know. You can call the church uh, phone number and um, follow the prompts to lead you to the pastor on call. Outdoor worship does continue this morning at 9.30 on the Parsonage lawn. Uh, we, of course, will also continue that next week as well. So if you are comfortable gathering in person, uh, we invite you to a really just a, a fun and lively worshiping experience. Uh, and, of course, if gathering together is not for you quite yet, that is perfectly fine. We will continue to offer these online experiences as well. For more information on worship and absolutely everything else that is happening around this church, make sure you keep an eye out for your e-news that comes out towards the end of each week. Uh, all kinds of information in there that will keep you up to date. If you're not receiving that, please let us know and we'll make sure that you get added to the list. Now please, receive your blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.